Hello everybody, it's been a while. I know. Um, so if you're on a rush and you just want to know how to make this material without understanding the theory behind it or how to fix a shadow problem, uh, you can just go ahead. Let me put it on the main screen for you. And this one. So you can just go ahead, pause the video here and copy the nodes. Don't forget to copy the values. So you have the values for each of these nodes here and also the source and destination values for the transform vector nodes. For, so for these three, source is instance and particle space and destination is world space. And you invert that for the one that goes into the WS normals. This is a material function. You can just right click to find it. And these are vector nodes. I think it's vector. Vector, vector parameter nodes. Uh, I think that's all. The others you can just like right click and find them. And yeah, just create the nodes, connect them like this, and that's it. Now, if you still want to understand the theory, just keep watching and I'll explain everything. Why and how it works. Also, how to fix the shadow problems that I found. Um, yeah, I think that's it for an introduction. Let's go. Let's make a material from scratch. So let's go to materials. Oh, also, let me show you my inputs while I do everything. There we go. Materials, material. Let's do M underscore face camera tutorial or a line to camera, whatever. Let's go into the material. All right, so for base color, I'll just create, hold T, click to create a texture sample here. And, oh, let me move these windows because everything that happens is on the stats. It's gonna overwrite that graph otherwise. Okay, now let's select a texture like pattern, test pattern two which is good to know directions the, the object is facing and things like that. Uh, it's going to be good in the future, very soon, when we need to know how, if the object's rotated the way we want it to be rotated, you know. Um, all right, so the second thing you have to create here is the align, where's my keyboard? Aligned mesh to the camera. So get this node. Then you connect world position offset to your materials world position offset. We need three parameters to control how it faces the camera, like which which direction of your object do you want to face the camera. So let's connect three parameters here. Actually, let me hold V and click to create these vector parameters. This first one is going to be X and then control D, control D again. Why is it not? Oh man, this bug is so annoying. So we'll just hold V and click. Sometimes it does duplicate another Y. So Z and Y. All right. All right. So X, Y and Z. Now, let me connect these here, here, and here. So this is gonna move the object somewhere in the world. So it disappeared from now because you can't have these object bases as zero, 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 but we're gonna fix that soon. You want the axis of your object to the camera axis. You want it to be at when it's facing the camera the way you want. So let's say, Let's say you want the X of your object in a real X is usually the front of something. 
So let's say you want the X of your object to face the camera. This means whatever is the front axis of the camera, the axis towards the camera in camera space is where you have to put the X for your object. So this X parameter here would be set to that axis. Now we need to find those axes for the camera space. Because maybe, I don't know, maybe one day Epic changes their mind of how their spaces work and you want to change it. So I'll teach you how to find these directions in the camera space. So the thing you do is you create some node and then like a three float node, you hold three and click, then you set it to X. So RGB is the same thing as X, Y, Z. So you set it to X by setting X to one, Y and Z to zero. Now this represents an X direction. If you transform this node, so you're going to do transform from world space into the camera space and preview this node. So you right click, start previewing node. I have a shortcut that I set it to P. Uh, it's not the default. I don't think it even has a shortcut by default, but I'm going to be pressing P from now on. You just know that I'm doing start preview node or stop preview node, which would be in the same place if it's already active. So start reviewing the node. Now, the world X axis, as you can see right now, it is pointing, like you, you have to look at this bottom gizmo here. Let me zoom in this. So you have to look at this bottom gizmo here. The X is currently working, uh, pointing towards the camera. Now it's pointing to the right. Now it's pointing up, now left, down, towards the camera again. And if I rotate the other way, like on the same direction as the camera is looking and from the colors that the material become you will know which axis is x in relation to the camera so currently x is pointing towards where the camera look so like you know the direction of the camera and this is blue this means that the direction the camera is looking at is z positive z if I point X to the right, it becomes completely red. So you know that to the right on the camera is positive X. If you make X point up, it becomes green. So up in the camera view is Y. You can see that's different from the world because if you look on the viewport, when you, if you look at the X, uh, the X is here at the bottom left, you'll see that up is Z, forward is usually X, for unreal that's forward, what forward means, and side means Y. So in the camera, it is different. Remember, for the camera, up is Y, right is X. So if I put X here towards right, becomes red and forward for the camera is Z. That is very important. You have to remember that. All right. So why do we have to worry about how the axes work inside the camera? Because I want to align my mesh. My mesh is three axes some way in the camera view to make the mesh, like if I have a plane and I want the plane to always be facing the camera, let's say this is my plane and this is X for the plane, the forward of the plane. If I want it to be facing the camera, like my hand is towards the camera now, is it? Yes. So like my camera is towards the camera now. If I want X to be pointing towards the camera, it means negative Z because the direction the camera is looking is Z. So the other side, the opposite direction is negative Z. So minus one on Z. All right, so let's say I had a plane. Actually, let's have a plane. Let's make a plane here. Basic uh, shapes, plane. All right, so I've created a plane. Let's apply the material we're working on to the plane. Mm, and face camera tutorial, yes. Let's apply it to the plane. I haven't done anything to it. Yeah, I haven't saved anything uh, on it yet. So let's save. It's going to break the plane. 
let's disconnect this for now because I need to see the plane. All right. So the forward of uh, the, the good thing about this texture is you know what's up, right, forward, etc. So we know the forward of this plane is its up direction. So it, it is not rotated at all. So I know it is its up direction because uh, it's Z here. Uh, its right side is X. Let me reduce the speed. And its downside is towards its Y. So we have to remember that for the plane. All right, for forward Z, right X, down Y. Let's make that material force this plane to always face the camera. All right, so for the plane, this plane is not the same, so that's not gonna be a good preview. So for that plane, X on the plane is right. And right on the camera view space is X2. So this means that the X of the plane is going to be on the X of the camera. So X, this parameter, is going to be on X of the camera. So 1 on X, 0, 0 on Y and Z. Y of the plane was down. And down, uh, the camera up is Y, right? So that would mean Y is equal to 1. So down is y equal to minus 1. It's the opposite of up. So we're going to get the y of the plane and make a point down in the camera space. So minus 1. And then the plane z is what we want facing the camera. Because remember, on the plane, z was the direction that has its face. And we want that facing the camera. So the z of the plane, this parameter here, will be pointing towards the camera and towards the camera is minus z because the camera direction again the camera direction is z so against the camera pointing towards the camera is minus z minus one on z so that's how we'll make this plane face the camera let's connect world position offset to the materials world position offset save this and now our plane is always facing the camera. All right, so we've done it for the plane. Let's try with something else. Just to make sure that this is working, you know? So I'm gonna create a material instance here so that I can change those parameters easy, uh, easily. So material instance, face camera, let's call it cone, because it's gonna work for the cone. And let's apply it to some cone. Let's apply it to this cone that's rotating with another material that I have. All right, so we apply it to this cone. And if I rotate the camera, the cone is always facing, its tip is always facing towards me. And why is that? Because we've set up the material by default to make Z point towards the camera. And if you select the cone, set its axis to local space so this button here on the top right this button here if you click it you and you have this cube it means you're seeing the axis on local space uh, so local and global space is like now i'm on global space i'm going to rotate the cone and if i go back to the move tool you can see z is still pointing up it doesn't it doesn't follow the cone rotation but if you set it to local space you can see what are the actual axes of the object pointing towards so now I can see that the tip of the cone is its Z axis, it's the blue one. So remember, X, Y, Z, R, G, B, red, green, blue. So Z, blue one, tip of the cone. Because we made that material to make Z point towards the camera, the tip of the cone is pointing towards the camera. So it, it's facing against the, the, the rotation the camera has. So if the camera is rotating towards right, the cone is rotating towards left because it's always gonna be facing against the position of the camera. For a plane, you don't see the perspective changing because it's just plane, it's, it's just planar. So that, that works perfectly for sprites because it always look like they are perfectly facing the camera no matter where you look. So this is very useful for that. And by not using blueprints to rotate something, you save computing power because the GPU does this like it was nothing. 
Alright, so now let's test our material by making this cone face other directions. Always face some specific other direction towards the camera. Um, so let's open our, the instance we created. Let's move it somewhere. And let's see its parameters here. All right, so let's say I want the cone to be always pointing right. So it's going to be like this, you know, always pointing that direction. Let's see what are the how what are the axes we want to manipulate. So let's get this cone here as an example. And then what I want it to be facing the camera as is like this. So what is this exactly? Z is pointing right. X is pointing up and Y is pointing towards the direction the camera is looking. So if we do things right here, we're going to see the cone facing right and we're going to see red and yellow greenish at the top. So red at the bottom or magenta at the bottom, red front, greenish, yellow at the top. So let's configure the cone to do that. So here you have the cone being modified and let's remember the axis, Z to the right, X up, white words the ca the direction of the camera all right so x of the cone needs to be pointing up in the camera space up in the camera space is what y so we're gonna zero x here one on y now the y of the cone is gonna be pointing towards the direction the camera is looking which in camera space is z so B becomes 1. And the Z of the cone is going to be pointing towards right, which in camera space, right is X. So we zero the other one. And this is correct. So we can see the cone is pointing right and the colors are as expected. So now that we know how to manipulate something to face whatever direction we want, let me show you some caveats, some problems you may want to fix. So let me delete this plane. I won't need it anymore. This cone is good for reference. I'll leave it there. So what I have here, the setup I have here is this cone is parented to this cube. And when I play the game, the cube is rotating. While the cube is rotating, do you see what's happening to the cone? It's not facing the camera the way I wanted all the time. It is rotating. It's it's a bit messed up, right? It's not fixed. Let me do this to a cube, uh, to a plane as well. So let me bring back that plane. Can I do that? Yes, cool. And let me attach the plane to the cube. Oh, the plane needs to be movable because the cube's movable. All right, so you're gonna see the same thing happen to the plane. The plane, as, of, as it is now, is always facing the camera, right? No matter where I go, it is facing my camera. But if I play the game, it's like it's rotating. Something's wrong. All right, let's fix that. What's going on here is when you go into the material, into the align mesh to the camera node, something that this node does with the object basis, so those axes that we were setting up, what, the, what this node does to those axes, it gets them in world space and converts them into instance and particle space. Instance and particle space is just a more advanced way of doing local space. The difference is that it works for instanced static meshes. So it's converting from world space into particle space. From world space into particle space or into local space, means that let's get this cube here this cube is not rotated at all so it's forward x matches the world x direction it's going towards my right uh, at this view if i rotate this cube now it is pointing almost towards y here in the world direction so y is coming towards the camera here in this rotation so x is pointing towards y a bit if i send let me, let me rotate it 90 degrees to make it easier. 
So if I tell if I get x in world direction and transform it to local space, what this cube sees as x direction now is minus y because it's the cube's minus y direction. So that's what happens when you convert a world space rotation or direction into a local space of an object. It's going to be that direction in this object's viewpoint, like how it sees the world from, from its own, own rotation. Now, if I rotate this cube back to x facing right, now x for the cube, x in world space, for this cube is also x because it matches the world. If I rotate this cube, x facing down this way, now x in world space for this cube is z. So you see how me rotating the cube changes what those world space axes mean, depending on the cube rotation. And that affects this node here. The, let's go back here. Custom object bases, the axes we pass to it, x, y, and z, they are affected because this node is converting them to world from world space into local space. So when you rotate the object, those change. That's why when my objects are parented to the cube and the cube rotate, they are rotating with it. So every axis in world space keeps changing for them. So they will rotate. If you don't want that, that to happen, you need to nullify this. How do you nullify this? Talking about transforms, if you were converting from world space to local space, the way to counter that is to make the opposite before sending those axes to this node. So the node is converting from world space to local space. You're going to do it the opposite way, convert from local space to world space. So you're going to nullify those transforms. So let's do that. Let's get X transform from instance and particle space, which, which is what the node here is transforming to, and the destination is world space, which this node is transforming from. So we're going to do that here, and then we do that for all the axes. Z and Y. And now we save. And let's simulate so now the cube is rotating but my objects are not rotating with it anymore or just not even with it just having weird rotations that's not happening anymore so these objects they face me correctly now no matter where i go all right so we fixed that problem now there is another problem let me stop this let's get the plane here now if you look at the shadows on the floor you're going to see that my lights coming from this view direction, my lights coming from the left and above the objects. So this face of the cube is lit because of that. So if I go from this side here, if I look at it from this side, the cube is shadowed, but the plane is not. It means the plane's normals are telling Unreal that they are still facing the other direction. And that's probably what's default for this plane. So let me see, the plane was facing up without the material. Oh, actually, the plane is lit because it's facing up in its, its normals is just facing up. What, what's happening here is to render a material correctly, the material to render a mesh correctly, the material needs certain information to know how to shadow it correctly. It needs to know where its vertices are to render the shape correctly. And it needs to know the direction of those vertices, the, the face that those re vertices represent. That's a normal. And the normal has to be facing correct directions in order for the light to look real. The normals for this plane are always pointing up. And we're not changing that while we rotate the, the plane. So we're moving the vertices of the mesh. But for real, they're always facing up. So for lighting effects, if they're facing up, they're lit. It doesn't matter if we're looking at the mesh from against the direction of the light. It's still facing up, so it's lit. To fix that, we have to also rotate the normals. So this node here, Epic was very nice, and they gave us a rotated normals output. 
So we're going to use that. So rotated normals, put in here. Let's save. And let's test. So now the plane changes correctly. See that? Let's look at the cone. So the cone here is against the light and it's not lit. When it turns facing the light, it is lit. If you want to see what the normals rotating look like, you can multiply it by something. This is useful for debugging, you know, like previewing, like multiply by one and preview is useful for you just to see how things are rotating. So you can see how the normals here are rotating. Now, interestingly, that does look correct, but it's actually not. Let me get a sphere and apply this material to the sphere because I think spheres are good for seeing this kind of problem. Sphere. Let me apply the material. So MI face camera cone. All right, so I think you can tell there is something wrong with this sphere here, right? The light's coming from there, but it its shadowing is weird. There are artifacts. Uh, it's 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 very wrong. If we add reflections, it makes it even more obvious. So if we get the material and set roughness to zero, let me stop previewing this. So we set roughness to zero. It means the material is very reflective. Also, let's set metallic to one to make it even more clear. Metallic. Two, one. All right, that's cool. So yeah, something is definitely wrong with these reflections. That, that, that does not make sense. And what's happening here is the normal input in the material, it expects tangent normals. Tangent normals are just offsets in the direction of a surface that's supposedly planar. When you see normal textures, the mostly blue ones, those are tangents, the tang tang tangent normals. And tangent normals, like I said, uh, they're just offsets, and those offsets are set in those textures by the red and green colors. Red offsets the things, uh, offsets the face directions left and right, and green up and down. And this is what this normal input here in the material expects. So the rotated normals here from this, this node, they are not, from, from the colors we could see in the preview, they are not tangent normals. They are not mostly blue. They're every color. This means they are world space normals. They can face all directions. They're not just offsets. They're the actual direction something is supposed to be facing. And... There are two things you can do here to fix the material to use those. The easiest, fastest one is select nothing or the material node to see these settings here for the material. Go into material, advanced settings, and turn on where it is. Turn off, actually. Tangent space normal. So now the material is expecting world space normals to be passed into the normal input here. So you can see the sphere here has correct reflections now. You see how it's correctly reflecting everything? And if we go into the world and see how the our other materials are looking, you can see it's actually working. The top side is reflecting the sky. We have no weird rotations anymore. You can see the horizon line on the sphere. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much working. If I if I make the color white, just to set it to one, make it white, and make it like a clean mirror, you can see that the reflections are right. Uh, they are correct. See, it's perfect, even in the cone. Now the problem with just configuring the material to not use tangent space normal and use world space normal instead 
is that if you have some texture, some normal texture applied to your mesh. So let's get a normal texture here. Uh, so create a texture, texture sample. Let's find some normal texture in Unreal. I think there's, let's see, Lorem Normal. There is some normal texture. Oh, this one with the things are cool. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna get the, this new one here, this new one, this one called New Age Plane. So it's gonna make it look, my, look like my surface has, let me put a cube here. It's gonna make it look like my surface. That is a weird artifact and I think what's going on. I, I think I know what's going on, but it's something we're gonna have to fix later. It's gonna make it look like my surface when it's not rotating because now the normals would be screw up, screwed up. So it was supposed to make it look like my surface has this shape of cylinders and cones and things like that on the surface. But these black parts, they tell me that it's kind of broken because this is a tangent normal, tangent space normal. And now my material is expecting world space normal. So if I want to use that, I need to put it back to, where is the tangent space normal? So now you can see that, like, let's say the teapot is reflecting the building on this side. Is the building actually on that side? Yes, it is on that side. If I turn this off, so when it's expecting world normals, it works for the top because this texture is standing in real hey, This is blue, blue means up, and this face is up. It is, it is already, already facing up, so it just works. But from the sides, it's telling in real that this face is facing uh, this is facing up. So let me just preview this. I don't know, actually, I think I can preview directly the node. So this is telling in real this face is facing up. This red here means it's facing right, and green means it's facing uh, towards the camera in this case because green is towards the camera, right? And then this is also facing up. This is facing up. Everything is facing up now, mostly up because it's mostly blue. But that's not like, you know, this is tangent normal map and the real is now expecting for this material world normal map. So it's going to trust the material. It's going to be like, okay, so this is up. So from the angle that I'm looking up from this angle, I'm like, I'm behind what would be like up direction. You know, I'm behind the face that it's actually facing up. So it's just black. It's like, I'm looking at from, at it from behind. I can't see reflections on it. When I face up, you can see the reflections here because it's like now you're looking at the face, but you're not actually. All right, so if I want to use tangent space normal, so let's look at the sides here to see the fix. Tangent space normal. All right, so it works as expected. This side is reflecting whatever's on that side. This side's reflecting this part of the building. This side is reflecting the part that has nothing over here. So if we want to see this correctly and still make this mesh always face the camera, we need to use tangent space normals. So we convert these world space normals into tangent space normals. And for that, we can use the transform node again. This node is awesome because one of the sources you have is tangent space and you also have world space. Now for this case, we just need to invert because our source, so the thing that enters the left side is world space and we want to convert it into tangent space. And then once you have both of them in tangent space, you can just blend angle, angle corrected normals. So this lets you blend two normal maps, two tangent normal maps. That's what I'm doing here. And then I put it inside normal. And now the node is rotating the normals, but not the mesh. So let's allow it to rotate the mesh again. So now, apart from this shadow artifact, everything's working correctly. Let's see it on the world, because in the world, this shadow artifact is more discrete. So you can see the sphere. Uh, actually, let's look at the plane. The plane is more obvious. You can see the plane is rotating correctly. Now it reflects the floor, reflects the cube, reflects the sky. And also it has the normals from my normal map. So we've just mixed the normal correction from the rotation with uh, an additional normal map on top of it. So that's something you can do. And now let's tackle this shadow problem here. 
Let's go back to non-metallic so that we can see the shadow issues on the world. So I'm going to disconnect this, this, and this, and then just get the base color from the texture again. All right, I'm going to leave the normal map there because it's fun. All right, so my plane has the shadowing being applied to it correctly, except that it has a weird shadow that shows on top of it, right? See that? It's really weird. So I want you to notice something. Let me get the cone here, because the cone has it really obvious. Let's move it somewhere. Let's focus on it. Now, I'm rotating the cone. Notice its shadow on the ground. When I move the camera, the cone rotates to follow the camera, but its shadow is not rotating. Its shadow is static. So what's going on here, the shadow that you see showing up on top of the cone here as I move around, you see a weird shadow going through the cone, and there's nothing between this cone and the light. Nothing. The objects are over there. The light's coming, the light's coming from the sun direction here. So there's still a shadow being cast on this cone. What's going on? So, the way th rendering happens is, to render shadows, the light is like a camera. It renders all your objects to know which ones are behind which ones, so which ones which ca would, ca would cast shadow on top of the ones that are behind the others. And that's how shadows are computed. And then, after you have that shadow map that was rendered from the light point of view, like a camera rendering, really, after that, you render the actual camera view, which is most times in a different angle from the light. But the way this node there that we are using, the align mesh to the camera node, the way this node works is it's getting the transform of your object and converting it to a view transform and the view transform changes depending on what's rendering the scene so for the light the view transform is the space from the light viewpoint and for the camera the view transform is the view space from the camera perspective so it's two different spaces that's why when the cone rotates with my camera you see the cone rotate but the shadow doesn't rotate because the shadow the shadow is not being trans the shadow is being computed the position for the shadow is being computed from the light perspective and the light's not moving that's why the shadow is completely static on the ground to fix this we need to make Unreal know that we want even while rendering shadows we want to transform this mesh with the camera space not the light not the current view space always the camera no matter if the view is the light at the point of rendering the shadows. And fortunately, there's a way to do that. So the problem to do that, the problem to do that is we need to replace some functionality inside this node. And of course, you can double click this and change some stuff here, but that means you're changing an engine asset because if you go into this node and you search for where it is, oh, not this search, this button here, you're gonna see that it's inside. So you have world position offset folder, blah, blah, blah. Actually, if you look at the breadcrumbs here, you can see that this node is inside the engine folder. You don't want to change stuff that's in the engine folder ever. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. Because if you do that, you're changing it for all your projects. So if you make a bad change, like maybe you're just testing something and you leave something broken, you left it broken for all your projects using that same engine version. So for instance, I'm using Unreal 5.1 preview here. And if I change stuff in this engine folder, I'm changing for all the projects that I have using this engine, this version of the engine. So that's not good. But you can copy this node, paste into your project and do whatever changes you want. And then you use that version that you created. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna control C select the node, the you know node asset, control C. Then let's go inside my folders here from my project. So the con inside the content folder, which means it's inside your project. I have this materials test folder and I'm gonna paste it here. 
All right, so now I have a copy of that Unreal node and let's rename it to something so that when I want to search it on the material, you know, all the material possible functions, when I want to search it there, I'm going to be able to find it because its name is going to be different. So let's name it. To, so the problem is from what I was explaining, we need something in the camera space. So I would call it just camera space, but while making tests for this tutorial, I already, I already did that name. I already used it. So I'm going to call it camera space too, just for this instance. All right. So I'm going to go into my copy here. So this is, let me just separate those tabs again. Okay. So this is just like the original node, but we want to fix everything that uses view space on the transform. We want to convert it into camera space. That's the fix we need to do. So from view space, which when the line, the light is rendering, that's the light space, but we want that to still be the camera space. So camera space. And I think there are two or three of those yet. Yeah, so another one here for the rotation of the normals. Actually, the rotation of the normals doesn't matter for rendering shadows. So I wouldn't have to change this. And I will just because, you know, I'm going to do it for them all. But it doesn't matter. Normals don't matter when it's just rendering shadows because the, only the shapes and where the objects are matter. And this final, where does this go into? The farm, pixel shader, world position. Oh, yeah, this is very important. Um, also camera space. All right. So now we need to use this version of our node to not have to reconnect everything here from this node. You can just select the node and then you can see the asset that, are, that it's using the function, material function asset, asset, and I'll just replace it with my new align mesh, the camera space too. So this. It's just interesting that for this view, it didn't fix the problem. But it should have. Yes, it did for this view. So now as you rotate the cone, you no longer see weird shadows from this invisible cone on top of it. And you know that it's working because if you look at the shadow of the cone there on the ground, now the shadow rotates as the camera moves. It's not just following the light anymore. It's following the camera. So both renderings, the view rendering and the shadow rendering are following the correct rotation. Take a look at the shadows here on the left of the cone. And as I rotate, do you see how sometimes a piece of the shadow is left behind and then it gets corrected like now it's happening, you see, uh, that's because, uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but Unreal has the virtual map shadows now. And is it virtual map? Let me see on the project settings. Cause it's there that we, we can fix this. If you want to sacrifice something there, because it's related to a new feature, virtual rendering, virtual texture, shadow map method, virtual shadow maps. Yeah, that's it. So with the virtual shadow maps, Unreal only updates the shadow maps where it's really needed. So it saves a lot of performance and also it always renders the shadows in the same resolution, no matter from where you're looking at them. At them. So if I look at them from behind, they're uh, from, <laughs> from far. They are sharp. And if I look at them from up close, they're sharp enough considering the distance this cone is from the ground. If I bring the cone closer to the ground, even if you get super close, you can see that it's pretty realistic. Close to the cone, it's sharp, and then it gets a bit smoother. That's how it happens in real life. That's really cool. But this is not made for things that are rotated inside the material with with position offsets like we're using to rotate this. So I think what happens is Unreal calculates that this mesh is not moving and certain parts of the shadow are, are just like cached. They don't need to be updated because Unreal doesn't know this mesh is moving and it should be updated. So you have this bug and if that's bothering you, 
you can just change the project settings from the, the shadow map method from virtual shadow back to the old shadow maps. But the old shadow maps, they're bad. When you get close to something, it's blurry because now Unreal's rendering the shadows at a fixed resolution no matter where you look at them from. So as I go far, it's reducing the resolution of the shadow to render the whole screen so the shadow gets blurrier. And the further I go, the bad, the, the worse it's going to get. So I wouldn't recommend changing the setting and messing up the whole game just because of this artifact. Maybe Epic's going to fix it at some point. Uh, maybe they don't even know about it. Um, but yeah, that's how, that's one way of getting rid of the artifact if you really want to. So either live with it or have bad shadows in your game. I guess that's the options you have. So I have a material here that I made in order to be able to show everything we went through. Um, am aligned to camera, parameterized. And do I have an instance of it? Yes, we do. So let's put it here. Let's get... That, that one doesn't have the normals, but it's fine. It doesn't have like the teapot normals on top of it. But we do have all the parameters and I wanted to show you, uh, you know, everything we went through, like fixing, not fixing. You want to change the value of the setting to false. All right, so my cone now don't align to the camera anymore. So I want it to align. If you don't fix the shadow pass, now you have the shadow of the light aligned cone always shadowing on top of your view aligned cone, the camera aligned cone. And if you don't ignore the component rotation, turn this off. Now the rotations change as the object is rotated by something else. If you turn this on, which is that fix of, you know, using the transforms that do the inverse of what the align node is doing inside of it. Now you can rotate the mesh however you want. And this is always going to be facing the way you want it to be facing. So yeah, those are the fixes we did. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I really wanted to redeem myself and fix the, you know, teaching things wrong and not really understanding what I was talking about on the material tricks, tricks video. So yeah, that was it. Um, I'll try to be posting videos more frequently again. Uh, I went through a kind of a rushed period of my life and I, there were a lot of changes. I moved, I moved from one country to another. Um, so now I'm kind of feeling like my life is stable again, enough for me to start recording videos again. And I want to do that because it's, um, uh, I really liked doing that. That's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you liked it. And like I said before, I hope to be doing more of these soon. See ya.